you ever sat around at home or at hunting camp and thought about the idea of making your own bologna? Well, you're at the right place because we're gonna show you every step of the way and how easy it really is. We take 30 pounds of freshly ground venison and we grind it twice. I'm going to look over the recipe and make sure I have all the things together. You got to do the dried first and then you mix in the liquid. We have our spices all laid out. It's brown sugar, tender quick, salt, garlic powder, mace, mustard, black pepper, and cumin, and sage. And they're all gonna get mixed up into this bowl. Now we're gonna go ahead and dump in the amount of tender quick. Added the garlic powder, the accent salt, and now we're adding in the mace. Then we put in the mustard. Now we're going to add in the black pepper. Now we're added in the ground cumin to the dry ingredients. Adding in the sage to our dry ingredients. Now mix her up good. Now we have it all mixed up. Perfect. Now that we have all the smaller amounts of dry ingredients, now we're gonna add in the brown sugar. We're ready for the brown sugar. We have the brown sugar put in a bigger bowl and then we're going to whisk it up some so there's no chunks. Now we'll go ahead and mix in all the other dry ingredients into the brown sugar and mix that up real good. Now we're going to add in our liquid ingredients. It'll be honey, liquid smoke, and then king syrup. Mixing in the honey. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and add in all the syrup. And the last ingredient, wet ingredient, is the liquid smoke. We're going to go ahead and add that to the mixture and stir it all up. And it is a job to mix up all of that stuff. After working at it for a minute or two, we have her mixed up looking nice. Now that we have the liquid ingredients together with the dry. We're going to mix mix that into our hamburg. Now this hamburg was mixed up or was ground twice and we're going to mix this all up together and then let it sit overnight and let it marinate. And then tomorrow, 24 hours later, we're going to run it through the grinder one more time. While our meat's marinating overnight, we will go ahead and make some socks for the meat to get pushed into. So we'll go to a local fabric store, whether it be Walmart or Joanne Fabrics, and we will buy two yards of fabric. And then I'll go ahead and explain how to put those together. 
We're going to take our unbleached muslin cloth, lay it out, and then we're going to measure nine inches wide so the stuff comes by the yard, which will, if you do it nine inches, you will have four strips to the length. And then what we'll do is then we'll half it in half, and it'll be right around 22, 24 inches long for the sticks and we're going to take and cut the whole way to the length now i have four strips made out of a yard of fabric so now what i'm going to do i just measured from left to right and i'm going to cut these in half and it turns out on this particular one it's just a little narrow from a yard so we're going to cut it right in the middle at 22 inches which will give us eight eight sticks after we get done cutting the fabric into the strips, you want to fold it in half, borrow yourself a uh, sewing machine from your grandma or somebody, or get somebody else to do it that might know how to sew. But in this case, I'm going to sew my own. And you fold it in half, run it through the sewing machine, likewise. Once you get done running it through the sewing machine, then we'll sew the end shots. Finish sewing up your eight tubes, which is all you need, because this batch that we're going to do up takes seven tubes to for one batch of a baloney. So as you can see here, we have our tubes. The first one pushed onto a sausage stuffer. Now that we have all of our mixture done from last night. Now we're going to start stuffing our our socks, so to speak. We have our mixture here, and what we're going to do is we're going to fill up this tube. Okay, and as you put the sauce or the meat down in there, you want to put it down so there isn't a lot of air pockets. Otherwise, you get air bubbles or air pockets in your socks. And we got it just about full because you don't need it completely full. And we'll go ahead and put this back up in the... Now we have the canister full of meat. And Levi's going to go ahead and crank it down and then we're going to fill up, fill this sock. Ready? And you have to keep it really tight. As you can see, it's to fill up the sock so that it don't have a lot of air bubbles. Don't go so fast, Levi. Because the faster you go, the more chance you have to mess up. And I want to keep my right hand out against the end of the tube to show you, or to, to keep pressure on the stick of baloney. You can kind of see how this fabric was whitish, an off-white color, and you can see how the the treatment and the mixture that is on the meat is kind of coming out through, seeping out through. Okay, keep going, keep going almost to the end. Keep going a little bit further, a little bit further. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stick this up here like this, and Levi's going to tie a string around it, flip it around and tie it. He's going to tie it as tight as he can get it, with those 10 year old muscles. And then once he got that done, then I'll just snug it up even a little bit tighter and double tie it. And we got a tube of baloney. Okay, now we have seven sticks of baloney filled to, to the top. 
fine specimen of some good quality meat. Now that we have all the sticks filled, seven to be exact, tomorrow we're going to take it up to our local butcher shop and let him put some smoke and bring the temperature up to 170 degrees. That will help cure it and then we'll let it sit for about a week or so in the cold or in the refrigerator so the liquid smoke inside the meat mixture does its magic. Now that the meat's been in the refrigerator and has been marinating and the liquid smoke doing its job over the last two weeks or so, now we're going to go ahead and sample it. As you can see what this muslin looks like after it's been cured a little bit longer. We're going to cut a couple pieces off here and sample it. So we'll see what this stuff really tastes like, see how good it really is. Oh wow, that really tastes good, that's great flavor. Levi, you want to come over and taste a piece of this? And describe what you think of it. You can taste the pepper in it. So if you're not into pepper, you can probably cut back. It takes six tablespoons of pepper. Maybe do it a little bit later if you're not pretty into good. pepper. Is it pretty good? I'd say so. I really like the, the texture of it and in the color. And of course the flavor too. And this here is 100% venison. Now some people, they put in some beef if they happen to have some extra hamburg laying around. They add beef in it. Look, look. Now I like that. For one, it's pretty good. I like that it's somewhat juicy. Um, I like the texture and all. It tastes like some pretty good bologna. So now what you do is after after it's cured for a couple of weeks, you want to take and wrap it up into, cut it in short pieces like this, and you want to wrap it up into some heavy foil and put it in freezer bags. It doesn't necessarily have to be vacuum packed, although that would make it a little bit better. And then you could freeze it because what you don't want to happen is you don't want this meat to continue to cure and then it gets drier and drier and drier. Of course, if that's the way you like it, of course, that's the way you're going to do it. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for other videos we might put out.